Jeff, thank you for joining me today. Hey, David. Great to be with you. Thank you. So ChatGPT has been making headlines due to its uh, advanced artificial intelligence and capabilities of holding conversations and uh, responding to people. So as the founder of Tusk, where do you see artificial intelligence as it stands today? Well, it's in its embryo stage for the user. I think the problem is, which I think they're finding out by conservatives, is that whoever's programming it is programming it with kind of their take on what's right and what's wrong. And therefore, when you write something in or you ask the, the computer something, it kind of regurgitates stuff that's pretty woke. And that's kind of an issue. I, I, you know, it's not really artificial intelligence uh, unless you want to talk to somebody who's already woke and they're kind of set in their ways. It's, it's a difficult challenge. Can you elaborate on um, about your experience using ChatGPT? Yeah, sure. So I've been on it a fair amount, and I started asking it questions like a Biden laptop. Would it have changed the election? And it told me that, that a lot of people thought that it was misinformation, and, and we all know that it's not misinformation, although the government has not done anything about it. It's not misinformation. Yet, chat GTV repeated the woke or the progressive standpoint that, oh, this is just Russian disinformation. And when I asked them about the, uh, the 50 uh, professionals, uh, C, uh, four letter or, or three letter professionals, CIA type people, uh, what they thought, and they said, well, that they, that was their opinion that it's, uh, that it's, um, misinformation when we all know that it's not. So what's being programmed into it is what you're getting out of it. And if you have a kind of a, a slanted viewpoint, those are the answers that are going to come back. And they, uh, so that it is an issue and maybe they'll be able to correct that. And they say they're going to correct that, but we'll see if they really can. So when it comes to building software and AI, uh, what key factors and principles do you think is important and vital? It's a really tough one, um, and the, the the key points I think are somewhat your audience. But if you have a a take on something, like if you typed in how is gasoline going to help us or how is petroleum going to help us, if my understanding is it will not answer you or it will tell you basically it's bad news, and then we need to get away from it, uh, and that not the viewpoint of everybody. So. In order to do this probably right, it has to be very fair and balanced. I think they'll try and get there, but they're certainly not there yet. Now, back to um, artificial intelligence and the, the chat GPT, um, what are some uh, capabilities? Well, it's, it's definitely going to change. We, we have to be kind of careful because literally this can write papers for you. I mean, literally you could copy and paste. You could ask it, tell me about Tom Sawyer or Huck Finn or something, and it'll write a, a, a long you know, brief for you that you could turn in. So we have to be kind of careful that this is not misused by students and they actually do their own research and their own thinking and they don't just copy and paste. That's a negative downside. I'm not sure how they handle that. As far as business goes, artificial intelligence has been around for a long time. In, the, in an industry in itself, so that if you're making a widget, the artificial intelligence will realize, will, will figure out, no, that's the wrong widget, this is the right widget. So that's already existing, uh, and it's being used by companies. In this case, it's the population that gets to ask these questions. And so it, it could make search interesting, but you gotta be careful because right now there's bias to it. Now, as we progress, where do you see technology's impact on society is? Well, you know, we got to be really careful that we don't turn these, these, these AIs into monsters that want to start to believe that they're only right and there's only an answer. Like I put in uh, the chat GTP about us and it talked about privacy and security and I had to ask it, well, what about freedom of speech? And it gave me back a, a reasonable answer, but then it added, I would say some woke things like, yeah, but you got to be careful of freedom of speech because maybe there's misinformation in, in that information. And 
I think you leave that up to the reader to decide what's information and what's misinformation. So it, it will definitely have an impact. And when this is, it's not obviously fully operational now, but when it is, I think it's going to be really interesting. I, I, I worry, though, that it will, like a lot of things, it will take sort of this woke position. And a lot of conservatives will be very unhappy because they'll put something in and they'll get answers back that don't fit them. I don't know how exactly they solve that problem, but maybe it's a learning thing to learn that this person's a conservative, yet it wants to tell the other side of the story. So it's kind of a tricky situation. Thank you so much for your time, Jeff. Sure. Great. Thank you, David.